Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Doylestown Township Board of Supervisors for Tuesday, April 18th. Before the start of today's meeting, we met in executive session to just, you know, we talked about some personnel issues and matters. Um, the first item on the agenda is a presentation by the uh, Environmental Advisory Council. I see Dr. Baldessari. Are you making the presentation, uh, sir? Mr. Sawyer is going to do that. Hello, Mr. Sawyer. Welcome back. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for your time this evening. Kurt Sawyer on behalf of the EAC. Uh, this is a very brief presentation uh, on our climate action plan progress. Uh, I won't read you every slide, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. From the EAC's perspective, climate change is one of our most significant challenges. Uh, the board took the first step in addressing this with adopting the goals of the Ready for 100, which is 100% renewable electricity by 2035, 100% renewable clean energy for all uses by 2050. And so we are now taking the follow-on step, which is to develop a climate action plan. This is intended to be a set of things that the township can execute that will ultimately produce zero net greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. And we have a process that we're following. Uh, we're early in the process yet, but I've just listed the things that will come from now to the, the end of this process. We anticipate it will take us at least to the end of this year and perhaps into next year uh, to come back to you with a, a climate action plan for your review. The first step in the process was to start with the baseline of what do we produce now in terms of greenhouse gas. And we were uh, assisted by a, a student from Penn State who was just terrific to work with. Uh, we use a model produced by ICLE, which is an international group, uh, and the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. And the, the chart you see up there models the greenhouse gas emissions that exist now within Doylestown Township. The yellow slice there is transportation. And not surprisingly, transportation is the largest slice uh, that's true nationally as well. Uh, residential energy is the second largest slice, the blue slice. Uh, in our case, actually, residential is a little smaller than we thought it might be, but that's a function of the fact that our electrical supply is heavily nuclear at this point, and so that actually uh, keeps the greenhouse gas emissions from the residential and commercial sector down somewhat. We have been meeting on a biweekly basis with the borough because uh, largely their greenhouse gas emissions and ours are very similar in terms of the makeup of them. Uh, we've been brainstorming various kinds of action steps that we might take, and there may be opportunities for us to take steps jointly with them, which would improve the, the impact and, and reach. We are now in the process of modeling the various actions that we have thought of and refining them. The modeling that we're going to be doing is to intended to quantify the impact of each of the potential mm -hmm. steps so that when we come to you, we can tell you how effective various kinds of things would be. And we're also looking at how difficult they might be. So uh, I think of it as kind of a four square grid where there's some things that are, that are easy and high impact, we will definitely do those. There are things that are hard but high impact, we're gonna probably do some of those. The ones that are uh, easy to do but low impact, we'll probably do. And the ones that are hard to do and low impact, we probably won't do any of those. Kind of stands to reason. Uh, 
what we will come back to you with, we believe, will be a set of actions that can be implemented and that will reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. We're not going to promise you at this point that we can get to 100% based on the actions we come up with, but we'll let you know how far we think we can get. And I'll leave you with this thought as well. In addition to addressing climate change, when you reduce your greenhouse gas emissions, you also get cleaner air and water, a healthier living environment, and better economic outcomes. So, uh, be happy to answer any questions you might have. Anyone, any questions? We'll look forward to your next response, your next uh, application, whatever. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, EAC. Okay, um, any public comment on agenda items? Okay, announcements then. The next meeting of this board is Tuesday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. We're gonna be closed on Tuesday, May 16th for primary election day, and Monday, May 29th for Memorial Day. Next, uh, keep up with the township news, sign up for um, e-news at, uh, at doylestownpa.org, and e-news is sent out every Friday at 4 p.m. It's um, very timely, uh, it's interactive, and it's fun. Thank you, Stacy. It's, it's, a, it's a good tool. Upcoming events, April 22nd, Drug Take Back, Doylestown Hospital and Weiss's Market, April 29th, Community Yard Sale at Central Park, May 13th, there's a bird walk at Central Park, and that's probably at 9 a.m., 8 a.m., I don't have a time here. Check the website, there's time on the website, I'm sure. Touch a Truck is May 13th in Central Park, June 7th, um, Sounds of Summer series kickoff in, um, with a concert, Boathouse Row in Central Park at the uh, CNN Bank Amphitheater. The Capital Campaign kick kickoff event is at Central Park at 4 p.m., followed by High Noon, which is a Lynn Skinner band. Um, that is also, I think, the first day of summer. So it's a, a good time to kick off the Capital Campaign. August 1st is National Night Out, presented by the Dawestown Township Police Department, and August 21st is our annual golf outing at Dawestown Country Club. We're always looking for golfers, so please feel free to sign up. Next item on the agenda, minutes approval from the regular meeting from March 21st, 2023. Has everyone had an opportunity to review them? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Any corrections, changes? If not, may I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Correspondence, we have a resignation? Yes. Um, we, we have received a resignation from uh, Colleen Mullen, who currently serves on our finance committee and our pension advisory committee. Um, so I'd ask the board to uh, accept her resignation with regrets. I'm sad to see her go. Is there a motion to accept her resignation? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item on the agenda, reports from the solicitor. I'll have items to discuss later in the agenda, but nothing at the moment. Township engineer. Uh, I will also have something later at the meeting, but nothing for a report. Thank you, Chief. Nothing at this time. A director of operations. Yes, we have the 2023 road program award recommendation. I'm gonna ask Mr. Torpy to speak to this, please. This is for the 2023 road program part one. We went out to bid on PEMBID. We had four qualified bidders. We received a low bid from James D. Morrissey of Philadelphia, PA, in the total bid amount of $927,000, um, They were by far the lowest qualified bidder. They've done work in our township. We've had good relationships with them with the previous projects. So we're here tonight to request that uh, award be given to James D. Morrissey in the amount of $927,119.20 for the Part 1 2023 road program paving contract. Okay, any questions on the uh, memo? Is there a motion to approve the award to James D. Morrissey? I'll, I'll make, make the motion. I'll second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. They do a Aye. good job. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes, uh, thank you for that. We appreciate we're getting looking forward to getting started and uh, getting that wrapped up quickly and moving to part two, hopefully. Um, yeah, second item I have is the 2023 street sweeping contract. Um, this is a one-year extension from uh, an option that the contractor has to extend from the base year, which was last year, 2022. 
Um, you know, on my memo, I outlined the price increase. They're allowed to increase their price based on the consumer price index, which was 6.4 percent. So, um, for the 2023 street sweeping, spring sweeping, it's $17,248. The fall sweeping is $23,716. That totals $40,964 total for the year. Um, also, a an hourly rate for any emergency or any um, on-call sweeping, something that may occur is $159.60 per hour. I'm asking the board to approve Riley sweeping, uh, doing business as SCA sweeping of Pennsylvania. Is there a motion to approve Riley sweeping, doing business as SCA sweeping of Pennsylvania Fairless Hills? Motion to approve. Move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank That's you, it. Dave. Thank you. Township Manager. Yes, we have a request from the Village Improvement Association. Um, they have, are planning to do a village fair in Central Park on June 24th. Uh, they have asked for waivers, and we have costed out the waivers. They provided a site plan along with a um, certificate of insurance and various licensing, um, but we would anticipate our costs uh, to help them with the setup and some of the other um, events uh, that they're hosting at the our facilities, being able to use um, the amphitheater, et cetera, totals about $6,550. So they are requesting a waiver um, of that special event fees. They, they approached the VIA, approached us as um, Entering this as a partnership with the that VA for this village fair, which is a, an activity that just hasn't been held for a few years, mm -hmm. but was maybe 25, 30 years, um, and, and you know, ongoing, and then stopped. Like, stopped. I don't know why. About 10 years ago. Yeah. Anyway, so they're resurrecting the village fair, and they want to bring it to Central Park, and they want us wanted us to partner with it. Now it, it's it's. It's more than $1,000 that we typically waive on these sorts of things. I think um, we should look at this differently, though. I don't think we should look at this as just a, a, a waiver. I think, you know, it's with the Village Improvement Association and Doylestown Hospital. And again, I think we should view this more of a, as a partnership. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the waiver. I'll second. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. The next um, is a special event waiver at the Tile Works. Um, this is a $150 waiver. This is their first waiver they've requested this year for the Tile Festival, May 20th and 21st. Motion to approve. All second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's $150, a little expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next item is a waiver of a penalty for a township tax for um, uh, the taxes were paid. Um, our, the penalty portion was $34.98. Um, the request actually came from the county. Um, they're looking for us, and we also have a request from the township tax collector. Um, something happened with their bank after they made the payment. The bank canceled the payment or couldn't process it or lost it or something. So um, everyone has requested that we consider um, waiving the penalty of the $34.98. So much but the paid board, for $34.98. I know. The, the board to has to. Waiver? Motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Abstain. Tedious. You're what? I'm going to abstain. Oh, okay. Thanks. Works for the county. Gotcha. All right, Stephanie, happy more news. Yes, happy news to share with everyone. Um, it was in our E Friday announcements, but the um, township took uh, first place for our website, second place for the Doylestown Fire Company video um, that we worked with on our with our TAB committee in the borough, and third place for most improved newsletter in the Pennsylvania State Association Township Supervisors Communications Award. Um, and so we're very excited um, about those awards and recognition from PSATs. What's particularly fun is the Telecommunications Advisory Board video of the, you know, 
retaining and recruiting firefighters. Um, it's gone statewide now, uh, and it's, I think it was shown in the county theater. This is a really fun thing that they were able to do and did it with the borough and the Doylestown Engine Fire Company. And, um, so um, it turned out well, and I'm glad it got statewide recognition. Thanks, Stephanie. Anything else? You're welcome. Yes. Um, also want to indicate that we are recipients of the Bucks Happening 2023. Uh, first is the live music venue for the CNN Amphitheater for summer events, the Thompson Performing Arts Series. We were a finalist, uh, first of two. And for outdoor events, also the Thompson Performing Arts Series at the CNN Amphitheater, we were finalists first of two. And lastly, um, so very exciting getting these did, recognitions. Um, did we from send the Bucks copies Happening? to the Thompson and CNN? Not yet, but we we will work on that. Yeah. I always want to let you know first and then, yes. Yay. Um, and lastly, under my reports, um, the Capital Campaign Committee um, worked with finance to reallocate 35,000 of our 8.9 included in our 23 budget uh, for the community recreation um, center projects to uh, use as seed money for our capital campaign expenses, such as campaign uh, materials, donor software, uh, giveaways, uh, t-shirts, and the like. So I just wanted to let you know that um, we can repay those funds through the resolution um, on the bond issue as we've done in the past. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, That's all I have. supervisors. Nancy? Sure. <clears throat> you have anything? Yep, sorry, I'm just getting organized. Um, today we had our first budget planning session. I'd like to thank um, Ed Edenbach and Ken Wallace for their efforts to begin a really comprehensive and fiscally responsible plan and foundation um, for our for the township. Um, since I started, um, we've gotten more sophisticated because of the charts, which I've asked for, um, and I really appreciate um, their thoroughness and um, openness to all of our questions. Um, I just want to clarify for the record that the Board of Supervisors has not seen the architectural estimates yet for the rec center, and that the court project, or the court project, um, and they have not yet gone out to bid. So the Park and Rec Center is not approved really until we have the final contract. Um, I would just like to clarify, um, and I did provide copies of the estimates that were provided um, from the architect and the engineer on the site work and the court after we've added in the fourth um, tennis court. So, so we, we do have estimates, obviously, until we have an actual bid. Um, you know, those are just estimates at this time. What was the, the date on them then? I'm, then? I take that back, I'm sorry, I, I got my, they were going back and forth, so. Okay, but it's, the bottom line is it still isn't. I'll give you a copy after the meeting. No, I, I, I'll yeah, go back, I'm I, sure I Stacy and I actually sat down and we went over those items and everything. Yeah, okay, so. Anyway, um, just going back to my statement, last April um, I asked the board to table the Park and Rec Center based on the downward economy, the explosive building costs, inflation, and supply chain concerns. After a vote in August, a four to one to proceed with the project, there's still concerns based on the fact that we have um, moved the project forward um, and the facts and assumptions from the feasibility study that were done during the pandemic, were done during the pandemic. Um, further, as we move forward with this project, the project has sort of morphed into a different project uh, based on the assumptions that we were used. Um, for instance, we've had to backtrack on our commitment for the Ready 100, and due to costs, can no longer offer the solar, geothermal, or the sustainable energy, um, and there was actually an article put out. So I apologize to our EAC, because I know that was high on their list. Um, the building no longer qualifies as an official emergency uh, shelter. Uh, as of last fall, the Planning Commission um, said, because we eliminated showers from the plan, it no longer qualified specifically as an official emergency shelter. I think this building actually does have showers. Um, the gym also had assumptions around it, um, but it has changed. Originally it had hardwood. Um, this has, for me, created a pretty deep concern because now we don't have committed partners in terms of the basketball or volleyball, um, and that was part of the operations revenue model when we chose the size of the gym. 
We've also had assumptions. Um, we would pay someone $12 an hour, which is unrealistic based on inflation. And we also had assumptions that either a membership or drop-in rate would be would be between seven, <clears throat> excuse me, and $12 a person. However, the YMCA's monthly student membership is $39 a month. Um, I'm hard pressed to think um, we'll be serving our teens and that was one of the intentions of the building. Um, finally, I'm most concerned really about the utilization of the building, specifically on the assumptions we talked about above um, and the utilization study, and I'm asking for a utilization study from the information provided from our director of park and rec from the last couple programming sessions. Um, we've had low resident participation. It's of no fault of the park and rec board uh, um, director and her program manager. They've done above and beyond with their advertising. It just may be how it fits within our community, our location. We have plenty of parks. Um, I also looked at data um, from prior to COVID and our participation rates were also low. So I would really like to see that utilization study before we move forward. Um, maybe our 20 year project dream has expired. Let's put out a referendum and see what the taxpayers decide and see before we take on this tax burden. I'd like to make a, a motion to put this recreation center to a referendum for upcoming election in 2023. Um, I voted for this, I wanted this to happen, but I think it has morphed into something that maybe isn't the right fit anymore. So I has, as an elected official, I need to share what my concerns are um, and we'll see where it falls out. Thank you. I think there's a motion on the table. Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion fails. Dan, you I think it's probably worth, again, I think it's probably worth bringing our park and rec um, manager up here if Karen's comfortable with it because I think there was a lot of falsities that were just put out there. And again, um, not to mislead the public, there were things that were taken out of context, there were things that were very misleading uh, in, in Nancy's statement, and I think that the public deserves to actually understand the truth about what's going on, um, which is, you know, I mean, we can, we can kind of take it one by one if that's necessary, but um, we are not doing solar because, we, because again, it, the, the cost is too much, but we I are prepped that. for solar. Um, the flooring, which you say now you now have concerns, there's comparable, and, and Karen can certainly do, but, but uh, there is other community centers that are using the same composite flooring and are maintaining and bringing in uh, all of the programs uh, that, that you claim are not going to come to our uh, community center because of this flooring. Participation rates, which you're saying were low, um, is because you were looking at participation rate, rates based off people participating in trailers, okay? So you can't compare participation rates and say they were low. The idea that this has not been a community endeavor and reaching out to the community to ask for input is a complete falsehood, okay? There have been, uh, how many, how many meetings? Several. Several meetings were had for the public to mm -hmm. come out, okay? put in the newspaper, put in every social media, everywhere, we marketed it, okay? If people are not gonna bring their, their comments and, and then come around in the 11th hour after we've already taken the vote, and let me remind, as I said I would, that you actually held up this process by voting during the pandemic, during COVID, for the largest. You actually made our architects go back and put an additional to show an even larger unit than any of us wanted. So the cost so revenue made sense. No, no, but, but what you're saying is that you want to take this community center back because of rising inflation and building material costs, yet you voted for this building and asked our architects to put another plan together showing an even bigger scope of a building during the same time period when inflation was high when building costs were actually higher than they are now. So I just think it's important for everyone to understand that this isn't, you're, you're, you're saying that you're trying to be open to the public and you're doing the right thing. I mean, you're not, you're, you're not. And again, you're playing politics up behind this dais and it's not fair. And for you to get up here and say all of this stuff about how hard that this township has worked to come to this place before you were even on the board, you act like this all came together during COVID. We all of a sudden decided to put a community center together. That's not how it worked, okay? And you know that just as well as I do. But you're putting, again, falsehoods out to the public 
in, you know, in order to mislead the public into what is actually happening. I would, I would just like to address, I will add my data and the information that supports my statements to, I will um, add them to the minutes. So and I'll provide. We'll, we'll attach your comments to, um, to the minutes. No, I will attach the data. I want to, for the record, add the data and the information and Whatever the reports. Whatever you just said, we'll attach to the minutes. Okay. I want the reports and the data and the, pool, the, the information. You can't add data to minutes when it, when it hasn't even been. We don't, I don't see your data. You can't just add we're data just, to we're minutes. We're just going to add your whatever comments you want to add, not, not additional information. That's inappropriate. Well, I think the utilization reports that came from our director of park and recs could be added. They are appropriate. We already have them. So it would be redundant to have them to the minutes. <clears throat> All right, let's move on. Dan, you have anything? Yeah, a couple things. Um, just some clarifications. We didn't eliminate solar panels because they were too expensive. We eliminated them from the project because we are currently getting 100% renewable energy through our last power purchase agreement that lasts through several years. So at this stage, it would not make sense to add solar panels to the project. We were planning to. It does not make financial sense to do so. Now we are going to build it in the event that in the future we cannot meet the same goals with the power purchase agreement and we can put solar panels in ourselves. It was never abandoned due to the, the, just the cost of the solar panels themselves. Uh, the other piece about geothermal, geothermal was never a estimated part of this project. It was something that myself, Jen, uh, and the EAC requested that it be studied to see what the cost would be. And we came back that it, the cost would be prohibitive, so it was not included in that. And that's because we don't fit a, a good, we're not a good candidate for geothermal at an inexpensive rate. So we went and looked at heat pumps, electric powered heat pumps through solar. We said uh, we made a hard decision to not pursue that at this time because of the gas uh, versus diesel backup cost and the operating energy of it. So we decided not to do heat pumps, but again, we are going to build an HVAC system with the anticipation that we could replace it with uh, electric heat pumps or whatever other different technology we have at the time when this natural gas furnace no longer works. The, these weren't things that were part of the, the whole cost estimate and then removed. They were they are things that we have asked for estimates on and decide whether or not to include them in the project. And in both cases, we have removed them from the project. Um, so that, that's my point on that. Um, and as far as utilization rates go, we, had, we paid a prof professional firm to come and tell us in estimates about what the utilization rates were for. Like all of us were on that meeting, you, myself and you as well, Ms. San Cecilia. Uh, and one of the questions I asked was, are, are these projections at 100% capacity? And they were not. Um, and one of the very first meetings I joined with, when I was elected to this board, was with one of our engineering groups. And the engineer sat us down and said, every time one of these buildings is proposed, the supervisors always think they're gonna be able to cover 100% of the costs, and they're always wrong. This is a government service, we're not in it to necessarily break even. It would be great if we can. But at the end of the day, we're looking to provide a service to our community. And that, in my mind, is one of the key roles of government. All right, that aside, um, I do want to just mention the Performing Arts series. I had another nice compliment on that. Uh, for those who may not know, we have a public mulch pile in the back of Central Park. I was there this weekend gathering stuff from my farm. Uh, I was talking to some of the residents back there and I had re a resident go out of his way to tell us uh, how wonderful the Performing Arts series is. So Buck's Happening is nice to have first place, but I like the, uh, the mulch feedback <laughs> as well on that. Um, regarding the drug take back event uh, this Saturday, uh, by all means, if you can get to Doyle Sound Hospital or Weiss Market, please take advantage of that. But we also have uh, year-round take-backs here at Doyle Sound Township outside of our police department, and CVS offers it as well. And uh, the last thing I'd like to do is uh, transition to my crotchety old man phase of life and thank the police 
uh, for dealing with events at uh, the Barn Plaza, which as some folks uh, know, the, the Barn Cinema is no longer occupied. At least twice in the past month, there's been large events there of people holding like pop-up car rallies uh, with like 200, 250 cars and drag racing down 611 and all that. I just want to thank our police for responding to that. And that's not an easy thing to go into a group of uh, 200, 300 young, angry, white <laughs> men. Uh, race, sorry, race doesn't really have, I don't know why I said that. But a, a lot of young 20-something year olds that are really amped up in racing their cars. Uh, so I want to thank our police uh, for dealing with that. OK, Ryan, have you? Um, just one comment. Um, uh, the, the scope of this project, as it was just said, has not changed. The scope has not changed. There has been some things we found through the process with pickleball and um, tennis courts. But the scope of the community center project has not changed. And um, I think it's important to note that our robust park uh, and rec committee uh, is in full support of this plan as well. OK, thanks. Uh, Jen, you have anything? Sure. So um, over the past month, I uh, attended the planning commission as liaison. Um, and one of the things that we discussed um, was a property that's right across from Kutz Elementary. It's very preliminary. Uh, they were talking about um, doing some improvements to that property. Um, but. We'll have to wait, as we all know, um, up here when people come to us with plans and ideas. Sometimes they go forward, sometimes they fizzle out, but that was one of the, one of the regions that we were looking at. Um, also, our, uh, we'll be discussing a couple ordinances that came up during our planning commission today uh, at our Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, for the Environmental Advisory Committee, um, they've been doing amazing work. You saw them earlier today. Uh, do a presentation. Um, they're also working on uh, doing some renovations, uh, some uh, cleaning up of like retention basins and small properties that uh, Doylestown Township owns to make the improvements not only for the environment but for their neighborhoods. Uh, it's it's very lovely work that they do. They do a lot of work. Um, you saw the uh, environmental impact study that they've been working on, and of course, our beautiful native plant garden by uh, in Central Park here. Um, and I also want to say I was honored to attend the Sari Run this year. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful, empowering uh, event. Uh, mm -hmm. We get to enjoy Central Park, um, and uh, a lot of women wear their saris, and, uh, and it's all about strength. Uh, women's empowerment, uh, community, uh, culture, and, um, and it actually benefits um, education around the world. So it's a very important event that we have here, and I encourage everybody to look for it next year. Thanks. Um, I have one thing. I have an additional member to the Capital Campaign Honorary Committee. Her name is Joan B. Parley, well-known in this community, head of the VIA or last year, or for many years, not currently. So I'm happy to report that Joan B. Parley will be joining us as an honorary member to the Community Rec Center Capital Campaign Committee. OK, no unfinished business. Moving on to public hearings. <clears throat> if I may, the board will recall that you previously authorized the preparation advertisement of an ordinance which amends your zoning ordinance related to EV charging stations and also the height of manufactured homes. Uh, that was prepared, it was advertised in the Intelligencia in accordance with the law. A copy was sent to the Bucks County Law Library. A copy was sent to your Planning Commission and to the Bucks County Planning Commission. Uh, so it's ready for a public hearing. I would note that the Bucks County Planning Commission had some comments, and Judy can certainly address those comments, but. The time is for you to conduct a public hearing and also hear from Judy concerning the Bucks County Planning Commission's comments. Will you please conduct a hearing, Mr. Solicitor? Anyone have any comments about the EV charging zoning ordinance amendments or the manufactured home height? Can I ask a question? With the EV chargers, Teslas are different than maybe some of the other. How do they address that? There's legislation that soon there will be universal chargers. So 
if somebody is putting one in at the time that there would be universal, it would be universal. Right now, Tesla still does have some that are proprietary of their own. Mm -hmm. This ordinance doesn't state what someone has to do. This permits EV charging stations as an accessory use to all principal or primary uses within the township. So somebody could, if on residential, certainly you choose what works for you. You can choose the level of, of charger and the type if you want to be proprietary Tesla, Tesla or the generic. Do we know how many EV or um, how many um, electric cars are in Doylestown and Bucks County or Bucks County? I do not have that data. Okay, yeah, the data was more broad. I was just curious. Okay. No. Any other questions? Hearing none. Hearing none, the hearing is closed. The board can take action. All right, is there a motion to approve the uh, ordinances for the, the changes in the ordinances for the manufactured home and charging stations? I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Change, both changes are approved. The next item is the board, as part of your next phase of your road project, solicited proposals from various banks and the like to fund $3 million of expense for the township to complete that phase two project. And if it doesn't finish, it'll go on to next year. Uh, at your last meeting, you accepted the proposal of TD Bank as being the most uh, beneficial rate to the township. To, in order to proceed to that closing, you need to adopt a loan ordinance. Uh, I have prepared the necessary general obligation loan ordinance. A copy was provided to counsel for TD Bank, who was satisfied with the version of the ordinance. It was advertised appropriately in the Intelligencer and in the Bucks County Law Library. Um, so it's now time for the board to conduct a public hearing with respect to the proposed ordinance. Does anyone have any comments concerning the highway loan ordinance related to the TD Bank proposal? Gene, now the hearing would therefore be closed. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the loan ordinance? Motion to approve. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, in addition, I prepared a resolution which is designed to demonstrate the intent of the Board of Supervisors to conclude this transaction with an invited bid as opposed to a public auction. The bids were invited from, I think, five or six uh, institutions, so I would ask the Board to approve the resolution, authorize the Chair to sign same, manifesting the Board's intent to proceed with a private sale, even though you solicited numerous proposals. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? That would authorize me to sign the, that we're proceeding with the, the loan. As, invited, as an invited sale as opposed to a public auction. Motion to approve. Thank you. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Jeffrey. Okay, there's more. I believe that Judy's dealing with these. I want the board to understand that if you proceed to want to authorize these ordinances, we're not going to do it all at once. We're going to sort of do it seriatim throughout the next couple of months. Okay. You're going to begin with open burning? Open burning, yes. Open burning, which is Chapter 93, goes hand in hand with the minor change to Chapter 94. Chapter 94, we're removing one section that dealt with modifications to the overall regulations, and that dealt with open burning. We're taking those modifications out of that ordinance because that regulation is no longer applicable and creating a separate open burning ordinance that is based on those modifications the township had made previously and on the recommendations of the fire marshal okay. and code enforcement officer. So you're working on that now? That's, it's, a draft is in front of you now. So if the board was inclined, you would authorize the preparation and advertisement of the ordinance for a future public hearing. Oh, is that what this is? Gotcha. So chapter 93, open bur burning, it's a new chapter to our ordinance. Correct. Okay, good. Okay, um, is there a motion to approve the authorization of advertising this proposed ordinance? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay, thanks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, open burning is proposed for advertising. 
And then did you want me to take the next and one too, Jeff? Sure, just keep going right through. Prevention. Okay. Fire prevention. The next one, Fireworks Chapter 95 was already adopted. Well, I think we have to vote on 94. 94. Oh, I'm sorry, 94. 94. Which goes with 93. Right, 94 is taking out the one section. Thank you, Jen. Okay. All right, is there a motion to uh, advertise the removal of Chapter 94, Fire Prevention, from our ordinance? Is it a full removal? Partial removal. It's just the one amendment. section. Yeah, so, Chapter 94, Section 1. The amendment. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Fire Prevention next. No, no, Fireworks. Chapter 95. Fireworks, back to Fireworks. 95. 95 is the one that was already adopted. Correct. Mm -hmm. 95 was adopted, and we have um, wanted to make sure that you saw that, and along with the ordinance 409 that's there, and how it dovetails then with um, the amendment duty for fireworks chapter 175. This is the one we adopted last meeting. Right. So chapter. You don't need to now you have to do the zoning. You have to yeah. do the zoning portion of it. Right. So the I zoning sure portion is both. the portion that's in chapter 175. There were some small components of the fireworks change that necessitated changes to the zoning ordinance, okay. and they had not been authorized for advertising. So we're asking you to authorize that now so we can complete the full fireworks okay. amendments. Okay, so the motion is to advertise chapter 175, the zoning ordinance to include the amendments to the consumer fireworks ordinance. Correct. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Land development, Ashbridge at Furlong. Mm -hmm. Planning module. This is for sewer and septic. That sewer. is. It's for, it's for their public sewer, uh, the proposed on-site gravity collection uh, to the proposed on-site station and construction of a force main to convey the wastewater and existing Bucks County gravity sewer um, system up to Juniper Drive for the ultimate conveyance to the Green Street. Um, they have completed all of the information related to this project on the sewage uh, facilities planning module and we need the board to authorize it so we can submit everything to DEP uh, for their approval. And we're gonna need a revision to our 537 plan for this. This is what we're doing with this planning module. And we and should know out. that this, this the conveyance route mm -hmm. to take this stuff down to the plant will mm -hmm. travel Rogers Road to Spring Valley to Wind, Windover to Cherry Lane and Swamp Road. Correct. And it's consistent with your prior approved plan as well. I know. So I just want everyone to know. And that. your court stipulation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And part of that will be a second line. So there'll be um, both the force main as well as a line for any future needs in the community. Okay. So um, is there a motion to approve the resolution for the plan revision for the new land development, Ashbridge? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, PennVest closing. Yep. Um, we're in the process of working with Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority and PennVest uh, to transfer the loan uh, that we took for the Pebble Ridge Woodridge project to Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority. Um, there will be a closing that takes place in the next few months, um, but there are these funding documents um, and assignments that need this board's um, authorization so that we can make that transfer and would like the board's action on this um, one at this time. Motion should be to authorize the appropriate officers of the board to execute any and all documents associated with the transfer of the PennVest loan from the township to the authority. Which board, this board or this water and sewer board? No, it's from this board, the township, to okay. Bucks County, to Bucks Water, County and Water and Sewer Authority. Board. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. One bit of business that closes out that bit of business. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the Holocaust um, Remembrance Day resolution, which I will read. A resolution of the Township of Doylestown, County of Bucks, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the Board of Supervisors recognizing Holocaust Remembrance Day on April 18th. 2023, whereas the Doylestown Township Board of Supervisors recalls the General Assembly of the United Nations affirming the Universal Declaration of Human Rights 
that proclaims everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth without regard to race, religion, or other status, whereas Article 3 of the um, Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that every person has the right to life, liberty, and security of persons, whereas Article 18, excuse me, 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights states everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, whereas the actions of people who disregarded these rights in particular, the Nazi regime who engaged in barbarous acts prior to and including the time of the Second World War, have resulted in the death of over six million Jewish people, mentally disabled, homosexual, homosexuals, Roma indigenous peoples, and others, whereas the year 2023 marks the 90th anniversary of the beginning of the genocide of European Jews and others, the bleakest, most murderous moments in history. Whereas to never forget the outrage to the universal genocide of peoples, Holocaust Remembrance Day was established, and whereas April 18th, 2023, marks the observance of Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day, a day to mourn and remember the millions who died. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Doylestown Township Board of Supervisors recognizes today, April 13th, 2023, as Holocaust Remembrance Day and supports the rights inherent in the rights of all persons to have freedom from fear of persecution from all manners of discrimination, whether in race, color, gender, orientation, religious creed, age, national origin, ancestry, handicap, or disability. Adopted this 18th day of April, 2023. I put that in the form of a motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, lens lock agreement and resolution. Uh, the board will recall earlier this year you had a presentation from Lieutenant Ziegler about um, the police department changing the um, body cameras uh, over to the company called lens lock. Uh, they have an agreement which uh, we have presented to you this evening that requires a resolution along with the authorization for the appropriate officers to execute the contract with Lenslock. Um, Chief, is there anything else to add? I think you covered it there. I believe Mr. Garten's reviewed the contract. I have. And the changes I requested were made. All right, is there a motion to approve the Lenslock? Motion, motion to approve. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, where are we? Late, shady retreat. Safe routes to school trail supplement three. Mm -hmm. um, this what is, do we need here? Um, we need the board's um, authorization to approve um, Michael Baker for 16,490 to complete the bridge design, traffic signal, yes. etc. Thank, thank you. $16,490 um, approval to um, Michael Baker. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One more piece of the safe roads to school. Yep. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right, um, then we're sending a, a Chevy Impala, or no, two Chevy Impalas. Are these police off? off? These no. are four vehicles that we have, um, that we've had since 2008. So there are two vehicles going to auction. Is there a motion to approve them to go to auction? I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 What what vehicles are these? There are, we know? They're, they're, they're uh, fleet fleet cars for the operating? Impals are the police vehicles. They're former. They're, they're the police yeah, vehicles. Yeah, police vehicles, yeah. Okay. Police the, vehicles. Yeah, these were our, I believe these were our unmarked cars from the uh, detectives yeah. operated. Yeah. Thank you. Cars. Mm. They were so unmarked, they didn't know they existed. No. <laughs> Stealth. Okay. Stealth vehicles. Okay, next item on the agenda, trash hauler new permit. Yes, this is a new company that um, is collecting trash and recyclables uh, in the township and Vire Green, um, and we would like the board's um, authorization to provide them with the appropriate uh, permits to collect uh, trash in the township. Okay, is there a motion to approve Environ Green LLC from Horsham, Pennsylvania, to, as a, one of our trash haulers? Motion to approve. I'll, I'll second. second. Okay, thanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, treasurer's report from April 18th, 2023, sent to you electronically. Has everyone had the opportunity to review it? Yes. And if so, may I have a motion to approve it? 
Motion to approve. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Similarly, the bills list for April 18, 2023. Everyone had an opportunity to review it? Yep. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Announcements. Again, Tuesday, May 2nd is our next meeting at 7 p.m. We're going to be closed May 16th for primary election day and Monday, May 29th for Memorial Day. Keep up to date with the e-news, doylestownpa.org. It gets to your inbox every Friday at 4. It's really a good source of communication. Upcoming events, April 22nd, drug take back at Doylestown Hospital and Weiss Market. And as Dan says, right outside our, our door here, we can take drugs anytime at, at the police department. Community yard sale is April 29th in Central Park. The bird walk in Central Park is on May 13th. Touch a truck in Central Park is on May 13th. Sounds of Summer kickoff concert at the CNN Bank Amphitheater. Um, the sh first show is Boathouse Row, it's Yacht Rock. And then next is June 21st, is the Capital Campaign Community Kickoff at Central Park at 4 p.m., followed by High Noon, which is the Leonard Skinner Band. August 1st is National Night Out, presented to us from our uh, police department. And then August 21st is the annual golf outing. Plenty of opportunities to golf, so please do sign up. Next item um, is public comment, anything not on the agenda, any public comment whatsoever. Please come up to the podium. Bear with me. Please. Um, I'm a bit nervous. Okay. okay. Can so you bear with me? Speak to the microphone and identify yourself and where you live. Yes, my name is Heather Schroeder and I live at 1480 Turk Road and we've been through this uh, about two months ago. Yeah, I remember. We remember you. Yeah, good. Welcome back. Okay. So I hear all of this talk about, you know, dispersing millions of dollars for various things and we live on Turk Road and Turk Road is approximately 70 feet from my front door. The speed limit on Turk Road is 35 miles per hour, okay? From the studies that have been conducted, um, on my side of the road, there's about 3,200 vehicles per day, okay? Um, about 194 of those 3,200 vehicles per day are driving over 45 miles an hour, okay? They're considered to be outliers. The other day I watched somebody driving right to an electronic flashing sign at 61 miles per hour, 70 feet from my front door. Um, the stats broke it down and over 2,000 cars are driving over 35 miles per hour, okay? 35 miles per hour. 85th percentile of the cars driving on Turk are at 42.5 miles per hour, okay? Despite me walking on the edge of the road the other day to get signatures for petitions to help implement traffic calming measures, I have people flying at me at 44 miles an hour, okay? Our street and the speed limit is not safe, all right? So that is only on Doyle's town side. If you include Warrington Township, which has seemed to abdicate itself from any forms of helping us on the road, that's a total of about 6,400 cars per day. Assuming the same traffic patterns on each side, there's about 400 cars per day over 45 miles per hour, okay? And these, again, are only considered outliers. And there's an estimate of about 4,200 vehicles per day over 35 miles per hour. And again, the police, there's nothing in, they can do. They, they, they have tried to implement things on their own. They try to monitor it. The street is out of control. The trucks, construction vehicles, over 10,000 pounds. It, you know, there are signs on each end of the road that is, you know, basically telling the, vehicle, the, the trucks do not come through other than local deliveries. The street has, it's like a construction entrance to a development site. These cars are, or these, I'm sorry, these trucks, 30, 40,000 pound vehicles, 45 miles an hour, 70 feet from our front door, okay? So in order to help remedy the situation, we've come to you guys before 
and there's some sort of local traffic calming committee, okay? So in order to go through the entire process, we have to get signatures from over 200 people, 100 people on my side of the road, 100 people from the Warrington side of the road. Again, the Warrington Township has seemed to abdicate itself. When they put the development in across the street about 15 years ago, there is a road called Kelly Road. Kelly Road connects 611 and Bristol Road, right? So you would think it was supposed to, supposedly, the vehicles were supposed to be alleviated from Turk so that they could start using that road. On this petition, we are required by Warrington Township to get signatures from residents of people who live on Kelly Road and have direct access to Bristol and 611. We have to get their approval in order for us on Turk to request traffic calming measures. It, it makes absolutely no sense. It's preposterous. I hear you all talking about, you know, dispersing millions of dollars. We're asking for something to be implemented on our road. Speed humps, speed humps, uh, they're very cost efficient. They cost about $1,500 per speed hump. They're placed every so hundred feet. You know, I don't know, it was like 250 to 450 feet apart. The only way to actually stop these vehicles is to actually impede their driving abilities. They don't care about the signs. They don't care about the flashing. 61 miles an hour driving towards the sign. Nobody cares, okay? So what we're requesting is the speed humps. We're requesting that, you know, the speed be reduced as well as the speed humps be implemented without necessarily having to go through this entire protocol. You know, your goal as elected officials is for public safety. One of the things that it's, you know, public safety, we have been asking for almost a year. And what exactly is the plan? I think the plan is to get a study done. And Do you know how much it costs for a study? Well, you can't just put speed humps on a road. That and why is had, that? that? Because you have, because what happens when the next person says there's people speeding on my road, put a speed hump. Like you have to what actually do, you, do it study to understand the traffic patterns and okay. then implement <clears throat> traffic calming measures if the study shows. I'm not, I, listen, I understand if you, you know, you see people speeding down your road, I, 70 I get 70 feet from the front door. I understand that, but, but the fact of the matter is, is that like people speed down my road too. I can't just say, hey, I want a speed bump. I see people speeding down the road. Putting a, tr uh, putting a plan together to actually assess that, which is what we are, I know you've been in touch with Mr. Tomko, like that's, that's the plan to actually assess if there is a need for additional measures to slow the traffic on turf. Well, why is there no communication if this road is combined of two townships? I think there's been communication. Townships? I mean, I can see the communication. I can see the string of communication directly with you. Okay, well, what I will tell you is that uh, one of the women who live on Warrington's side requested the electronic speedometer to be put up on her side. But we're not they Warrington. They responded and said to ask you. Well, I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but we've, we've, they, they have asked that we're, we're basically taking the lead on the project. Is that correct? Correct, we are. And, and that's, the, that's the decision of the chief and the enforcement unit for the township, for the police department. I don't make those decisions regarding that. I think Warrington said, if we have no problem, if Doylestown puts one on their side, however, if they don't, we would oblige. So that's the chief's decision or uh, whoever the traffic unit that installs those. So, um, All right, if I can interject, this is, yeah. the first, this is the first I'm hearing about the lack of a speed collection device on the Warrington Township side. If that's what we're asking and Warrington's giving us our blessing, we will have it out there next week. What I'm also hearing from you is that you do not want to take the time to try to get the 200 signatures. What? It, that the, you have 100 residents on your side of the road that yes. need to be, and 100 residents on the other side. Yes. Are you willing to take the time? To yes. Go? Okay, well then that, if you could do that, we'll continue to collect our data. 
And did you look at the map in Warrington of what they want me to collect? Ma uh, ma houses I, I, that I, I, are sitting on okay. Kelly Road and have no reason to make it to Turk they, Road. The, the, the map was not arbitrarily decided. It is based upon recommendations for the PennDOT, which the township has adopted as far as our policy. We will stand by that until that policy is changed. All I'm asking you is, are you willing to go out and Of course I am. Okay, so let's go out and do it. Let's see what the results say, and then we can make a decision. Okay, minus the, the survey, we cannot go forward. I hear ordinances about fireworks. I hear ordinances about uh, my dog barking for longer than 10 minutes. I, I read ordinances about grass being longer than seven inches long, and I can be fined for that. But this is a whole process to get people driving on my street at the appropriate speeds so that we can feel safe 70 feet from my front door. Can I just ask a question? How did the 100 signatures on each side? It's 70%. It, they, you have to obtain 70%. Can I, can I interject? Well, if, it, if it's spread clear. out, I'm just, I'm just trying to under, understand can I, it. Can I interject? Yes, everybody's clear. The board, I'm going to remind everybody, the board adopted on August 18, 2020, mm -hmm. Doyle's Town Township Traffic Calming Policy. Matt Johnson, our Township Traffic Engineer, is here. Sergeant Jones is also here. Um, this clearly outlines the process, how these studies and things go forward. These, this is a subset of PennDOT's Traffic Calming Manual, which was developed. I don't know how, how old that is. Okay, so we didn't just do this in a vacuum. Warrington has almost the same exact policy as ours, except for when you get to the second survey, they only request 50% of, of the residents sign off when you, after, the, tra after the, uh, the study is completed. First phase is 70% of the study area. We, Mr. Johnston put together the map based on his professional opinion. He's a licensed professional engineer in the state of Pennsylvania. He was doing traffic and traffic engineering for over 30 years, okay? Mr. Johnson went to this while we went to Matt and said, what's your recommendation on the study area? We gave that study area to Warrington. And if, if we'd like to have Matt come up and, and talk about his methodology, I'll, you know, he's here to do that. Um, we put together the map. We had a public meeting, publicly advertised, held. It was a local traffic advisory committee, like the policy states. The number of residents that are here were at that meeting, okay? And we went through the process. We are in that process. Um, I understand it's difficult, but that's the process. If we implement traffic calming on one road, it impacts a large area. So therefore, the idea is that you have to survey the neighborhoods so they're all in agreement. Um, so that's really the intent of it. It's not to make things difficult. It's not to make things obstructive. It's a process. If we do it and then you know, there's multiple, multiple steps here. Everything comes back to the Board of, board of Supervisors at some point for approval, okay? So there is a, there's a study or a petition phase. The petitions are signed, we go and we make the request to the Board of Supervisors to fund the traffic calming study. And the study is funded, okay? And then we go to the next phase, the next step. So I just want everybody to understand the process. If there's any questions, we're more than willing to discuss them. I uh, just want to make that clear. As we go forward. So the onus is on you to get the signatures. That's fine. And you know, and then we can go that's forward. fine. And at each end of the road are signs limiting the size of the vehicles that are driving down the road to 10,000 pounds unless they are making local deliveries. There are construction vehicles driving down it all day. There are box trucks, there are dump trucks. So why are these vehicles able to easily just drive down the road without any repercussion? I would have to. I have video if you need and it. And I can also tell you that we have citations that have been issued to truck drivers driving on Turk Road. I work from home and I'm at home all day and there's nobody out there citati or cit giving citations. All day I'm at home and I look out the window and that is all I see. Ma'am, I'm telling you we have citations. Well, that have been maybe issued. we can produce some and let's actually take account. I'd, I'd be happy to. Okay, I'll wait until we're done. Uh, that won't happen tonight. Okay. You can we'll make an appointment and you come in, we'll get them to you. Okay, okay. 
So in the meantime, I will continue to move forward, but the idea that you all make the, you know, ordinances that run our daily lives, and all we are asking is you to implement safety measures. I think for but us, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, we, we can't just, an You're putting on the a onus fire, on me. But, but, in, or, but it's a, it, again, it's a process. People did you have a process to limit fireworks and when they can be? <coughs> yeah, the, yes. Yes, we did. Okay, Absolutely. and what about dogs barking? Did you have a whole process that they can't bark for yes. longer than 10 minutes? Yes. A whole process? Yes, there's been, there's, there, that the residents had to put you, the work into you, it? What, what you may see is at the end what, what happens when we approve a resolution, right? And, and you have to look at like dogs barking versus traffic is a much different thing versus speeding yeah, safety. and speed bumps. That's correct. Of course, of yes. course. And I'm so not, it should take priority. But it, but it also, it will take longer. Do you understand? It will take longer because it's a bigger thing that we have to work through. It's not going to happen overnight. It should and be safety comes first. That's it. I'll continue on doing what I need to do and I'll make an appointment to see the citations. Sorry, I'm with her. My name's Debbie Mumbauer, 1554 Turk Road. Uh, she's been working on this for a year. I've signed petitions for over 19 years that have been sent to the township and nothing's done. I had a letter from you, Ms. Lyons, telling me that when Kelly Road opened, our traffic would be reduced by half. Never happened. This isn't something that we just thought about a year ago. It's been going on for a very long time. That's all Thank I you. Hey, can, I, can I just make one more comment? This, this is not, traffic is not new here in the township. The reason there's a, this policies in place is because I agree with you that the can has been kicked down the road too long for too many years. Okay, we finally in the last five years got a system in place that can work if we allow it to work. Ma'am, we will help, all you have to do is ask how we can help you, okay? Ma'am, we, the police department, and you even acknowledged this earlier, the police department has done everything within its power to enforce, except for what you're, you don't believe that we're, we're issuing citations for overweight and oversized vehicles. Okay, we, ma'am, I'm not gonna sit here and publicly lie to you, okay? That's just not gonna happen, okay? What I'm trying to tell you is we will help, and we've done that. We've met with Warrington Township, okay? This is the first I'm hearing about the speed timing, and I don't know if Sergeant Jones has heard that before, the, the request before. I can guarantee the speed timing device will be out on the other side of the road as soon as we can get your permission from Warrington Township to do so. Okay, we're working with you. And again, this has been five years. Ryan, you've been on this board for a long time. You sat with the, the former commission, Mr. Tomko, Mr. Johns. We have done this, and it was five years ago. I said, enough is enough. We need a policy. Okay. You can't, you can't uh, talk I'll ex Let me explain it to you. Because I think Mr. Tomko stated before, if we put speed humps on your road, it affects many, 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 many residents outside of your street. Absolutely. It does, okay? Ma'am, I'm, I'm in favor. I am in favor of doing exactly what you're doing. Follow the, just follow the process, please. But we honestly didn't want you to, to not you because you don't do the roads, but we, we were really worried about the roads being resurfaced because the potholes were slowing them down. Now they got us straight away. It's crazy. And, and the onus on us, we all work, and now we have to go out after work and try and meet neighbors we've never met before in, in behind us and, and across the street. Why is the onus on us? Because we have 76 miles of roads in Doylestown Township. Some of them are local roads, some of them are state roads. So each, each treatment to each road is, is its own, you know, beast. And well, every, uh, there are lots of people who, lots of neighbors who want traffic calming. So we put this process in place, and I hate the word process because it sounds like, you know, we're all repeating ourselves. But we have a system. If you got a problem with your road, you go to the traffic advisory committee. You let them know what the problem is. Then they they do they do their thing. And then you you know if you're you need to make changes, then you got to get the signatures. And then there's a study done. Not only is it speed bumps, but there's all kinds of traffic calming measures that could be put into place, not just speed bumps. So that's the the best traffic calming measure 
is what it ultimately the study will determine. But that's what we have to, we have to have that system because otherwise it would be chaos. All kinds of neighbors would want all kinds of things done on all kinds of their roads for all for all the reasons that you state. And and I and I should state I've been on the traffic advisory committee since you know for for eleven years now. I mean and and I'm not listen the safety and welfare of our residents is forefront. We all agree with that. But I don't think you know looking at the full picture. You're, we were inundated every month with people saying, people are speeding on my road, put a speed bump. People are speeding, like, I mean, all of Doylestown Township would have speed bumps if we just went around it, about it that way, you know? So I think that's so, important. So is the process then in place to prevent people from no, moving it's in, forward? it's in place, no, it's and not. And saving money on your it's end? It's in place, it's in place to actually assess where the traffic calming measures Well, the numbers from the statistics tell you. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm going to be honest with you. The process was put in place so that we could get the data, get the, the improvement, <laughs> or please forgive me for saying this, to force the township from doing something, to do something. But without you, we can't force the board to spend the money to fix things. It's all, it, you're right. It does have something to do with money. What can I do to help you with this? I'm going to ask you, what can I do to help you with the survey? What can I do? Ask me the question, and I'll see if I can do it for you. Reduce the amount of people we have to get. I, I, I don't. Stop talking without a microphone. Without reducing the number of people, how can I help you? Oh, without reducing without the reducing number? Them. Yes. Please I don't know, but I'll think. Please okay. stop. You, you okay. did have an officer. I don't know how long you've been chief, but you did have an officer sit in my driveway about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And because he was working on a, uh, a side job doing my driveway, and he <laughs> asked if. I would give him permission if you or the chief at the time would let him sit. And he gave right. about 15 or so tickets out that day. Uh, and we also had an officer sit with you right. within the well, last let me month just or two. Finish. That was on the Doylestown side. Okay. He said, had he been allowed to give tickets on the Warrington side, it had been triple that. Okay. okay, I'm going to ask one more how can I help you with we the survey? We don't know how you can help. If you can't reduce the amount of people, then there's nothing. It's, 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 can I just ask a question? Is that, is it a hindrance getting the 100 signatures because of the, what do they how care wide, whether, whether we have, because of how far out you have to go? Is it the number of signatures? Like what's, if it's, if you need the 100 signatures to move forward, I'm just trying to understand because I feel your pain. No. It's, it's time consuming. It's not like it's a row home, you know, row homes where I can just go up and knock on 100 people's doors in like, you know, two or three hours. I'm willing to take weekends and whatever time I need, but the other night I got 10 signatures. It took me three hours. So you have to stand and explain it to them, all of them. And then when you get beyond Turk Road, now it's a whole other explanation. And, and that's part of the process. Uh, let me interject. That's part of the process. When you go and speak to the residents, the petition states that you're supposed to talk about what is occurring and so that they understand, so they know what they're signing. Obviously, that's, that's part of the process. Could I ask, so, Dave, if, if, could I ask if, I don't know if this is a little backwards, but could we potentially send a letter out to the residents? Yes. On behalf of the township saying yes. that, are you interested? We're, we're getting reports of speeding on Turk Road. Are you interested in further exploring it? I mean. It's not typically part, it's not part of the policy, but we can I, do I whatever understand. you the I understand. would like to do. We're, I'm fine if we send, I'm okay I don't that. necessarily mm -hmm. think that Warrington would disagree. Again, Warrington is going to take the lead on this. Um, again. Well, I think, I think that letter could come from both Warrington and Doylestown Township. Yeah, if Warrington's telling us to take the lead, they have to be okay with us sending letters to, a letter to the resident. Like, yeah, if we're yeah, taking the lead. Yes. And yes. if we can work with Ms. Schroeder, because she has the petition to bring to bring in to contact you, we draft a letter up, what it's about, that you're looking for the signatures, and would like them to contact you to sign the petition. You That's know, because it's only idea. one, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, just so we have it right, one property owner per household. Per how, one signature per one household. One signature per household. Correct. So that's important. That may help speed the process, and you know, right. and then you're not walking up and yeah. down the road. That's, that's a yeah. help. That's a I mean, we yeah. had to do that when we put a additional in. 
to send it through all the neighbors behind us and on mm -hmm. her, and that was fine. Yep. That was doable. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I would like to add to that topic. Uh, my name is Paul, I'm a resident of Turk Road as well, just an intersection where all those troubles happening. Mm -hmm. So according to Pennsylvania Traffic Common Handbook, it does require a range from 50 to 70% of approval rate based on uh, local municipalities, or it gives us option to use 30% disapproval rate. So where unresponded counted as favorable. So that means the township can send letters to the people and are asking who does not want to change that speed limit. And whoever is not responding goes to the favor of that. It's clearly says on, on that manual. And somehow we got only extremely complicated option to get that approval rate. But that is not what I think the biggest issue. I would like to ask our engineer about classification of torque road. How is it classified? Well, no, number one, I'm not the engineer, but can I, can I speak to your first question regarding the, the study and the approval Stop. rates and things like that? Number one, you're, you're citing the, the PennDOT traffic calming manual, <coughs> correct, sir? Yes, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania three, Traffic Comment Handbook, page number 18. Correct. Neighborhood Traffic Common Survey. It's supposed to be done using a range of 50 to 70% approval from the house calls and businesses in a good basis for further traffic common studies, or use 30% disapproval response from all non-responses being recorded as favorable. Correct. So we, that means instead of making us going hard way, going and knock on every house where people do not answer, where people don't care, mm -hmm. especially on the Kelly Road, where township or us using certain funds, we can send letters to all those 200 houses saying if they're not, they don't want to change the speed limit. So let's go toward easiest way that is also allowed for us. Okay, that's but PennDOT, I'm gonna go back. That's PennDOT's policy. Our policy is a subset of PennDOT's policy. You're citing PennDOT's policy if I'm hearing you correctly. Yeah. That is not our policy. Our policy is 70% of the study area and you require signatures. So I don't think, in my mind, you, if you get to send letters out and someone doesn't respond, you're gonna say that's an approve, that's a approval or a positive response. And then all of a sudden, yeah, we, get, we don't get anybody. Let's say we get very little response or, or no responses at all either way. And all of a sudden now we say, well, it seems like traffic calm is moving forward. We put speed humps in, we go to the next one eventually. And then people are coming here complaining about speed humps. We have our, we're following our policy, so I don't know if I agree with you regarding your statement that we go the other way. We, I think we're willing to put the letters out to say we're conducting a study, it was brought forth by a resident, and that you need to sign the petition, and we need 70% in accordance with our traffic calming policy. If the board, I'm willing to do that and help, and we can get that done. The, that's what I'm hearing from the board, and they're directing me to do that. If that's the case, we'll move forward. I don't, that's, there's that's no fine. other way. That's fine. If uh, you guys can all kind of overtake Pennsylvania rules and change your own here without anybody even can find local PennDOT, that book. That PennDOT manual is not a law. It's not a, it's, a, Mr. Garden, you can speak, it's a policy. It is a, it's a policy. It's like a design, it's like a design uh, okay. standard. Th that is uh, fine. Do you have on your policy how many attempts needs to be done uh, to, to knock in the door, like two visits or three visits to, to see the customer who lives in that area or for them to respond before we can conclude? Are they on our side or, or, or they don't want to do it? How many times I need to knock on your door if nobody's at home? We did not set a time limit. If you recall, after the meeting, it was kind of after the meeting, after everybody was leaving, and one of the things that brought up, we said, and I said to, I think, Ms. Schroeder, to you, I said, there's no time limit here. If, it if you can get the signatures in a month, or three months, or six months, or a year, we'll still follow the policy. It doesn't matter to me how long this takes. So if, I, and I know, look, we understand this is not easy, and that's in some regard is part of the process to make sure everybody's informed. You came to us and we, you're in, you wanna be informed. We wanna make sure that everybody else is. I'm willing to have another public meeting and speak no. to this and bring professionals here to talk about this. I completely this. Well, agree that everybody has to go by policy. I, by the rules, there is no questions. Now I have one simple question that is, in my mind, related to all those issues we come from, is 
what is a classification of a torque road? How is it classified? Well, and if it's classified, it's supposed to be in accordance to specific rules and yeah. uh, requirements for that road. But what is so stop me if I'm wrong. Well, it's, it's classified as, as a neighborhood collector. Neighborhood, neighborhood collector road. And unfortunately, Judy left. I know Mr. Kelso's here, and he's on the Planning Commission. And, um, the Planning Commission adopted that street hierarchy, did they not, Tom? Um, or someone on the board, maybe yes, just F? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, our Planning Commission, at the recommendation of our planner, went through the street hierarchy, also in conjunction with our- Traffic Advisory Committee. Our, the old Traffic Advisory Committee, okay, mm -hmm. and made a recommendation to the, the board mm -hmm. and through the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission adopted those criteria for- Neighborhood collection road. All of road. the township roads, including Turk Road. So it's neighborhood collection road. Right. According mm -hmm. to Pennsylvania, Department of Transportation, again, it's law book, handbook, Bible for Pennsylvania. No, no. According to that book, this road is supposed to have line width from 9 to 11 feet. That is 10 feet 3 inches. Perfect. Fits. Shoulder width not available. It is. Parking line, 7 to 8 feet parallel. This road does not have it. Bicycle line, bike line, 5 feet parallel to the street, does not have it. So by all those dimensions, by everything, this road classified only as local small road, just local road. Mr. Johnson can speak to this if you'd like. PennDOT's criteria are different than ours. We have a subset of PennDOT's criteria. That's the way our planning commission and our board adopted our local classifications. According to PennDOT, every township owned road that's not theirs is a local road. We've then taken them and categorizing differently, and it's for Dave, planning I'm sorry, you're repeating purposes. Yourself. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, it's for planning purposes, and I think you're citing PennDOT criteria, and it's just design criteria, and it's a standard. It's not it's not law. It's a policy. It's a standard. So basically, Dave, if if I'm not mistaken, what you said right now to to yourself, to people here, and all the residents, that you can turn that road into whatever you want. You can classify it as a highway based on. If you like to, if you need more traffic, because that's where all those problems begin. As, as soon as that road becomes 35 miles per hour zone, all GPS use that road as the shortcut. Now we're talking about different issue. It's not speeding issue, it's cut through issue. Because almost 95% of the traffic goes from Turk Road to Almshouse Road without making even turns. I'm standing on the street, I'm looking at those lamps, I'm following people. After the first meeting we had, now mm -hmm. I'm following people, just go 35 miles per hour, trying to slow down who's behind me, and I'm just going that road. Everybody used that road as the cut through. So in that case, and again, according to Pennsylvania government state, Pennsylvania government law, it's supposed to be done different study, not speeding study. Cut through study is supposed to be done on that road. All those issues, occur only when speed limit on that road was changed to 35. Now all GPS uses that road as the shortcut. I draw especially in uh, small development across the Turk Road, Warrington Ridge. I used to live there for 12 years. I used my NAV to drive to Marshalls. Inside of the township, it was constantly routing me to the Torque Road, not using Keller Road at all, until I hit Keller Road. All those issues only related to the speed limit was changed after that classification on the street was changed. Well, I think, again, I think the traffic study will help inform us on all of these things. So I hope that by being able to, if we can help you by sending out the letters and kind of, you know, speeding that, that up, that process up, then we can get some answers on all of these. That's I, I think I, I'm a little confused. Are you saying that you would like to see the road reclassified from a neighborhood collector to a local road? Yes, because in that and case- that, In that case, it would reduce traffic, cut through traffic, because the GPS road directions would avoid the local road. Not only that, any, any GPS algorithm, Calculate. Okay. I understand where you're coming from now, but are you asking at the same time the road be speed limit be dropped from 35 to 25? 
20 to 25, according to Pennsylvania law. Well, Maybe it's different here, but. Okay. Do you understand that if it gets dropped, that it, was, it will be, you will see very little to no improvements on the speed? I completely disagree with you. Uh, I can prove that for a fact, because we've done it in other roads that have been complete failures. So when a road classification is changed, speed limit changed from 35 to 25 miles per hour, it will give more options, according to PennDOT, on the traffic common uh, I, procedures I and measures. Okay. I think you, you, might be, you might be correct as far as the, 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 the GPS directions may change. I don't think that the, and this is just me being me, I don't think that the volume of traffic on that road every day is going to significantly be reduced by the lack of GPS people coming in that direction. It's not going to be changed dramatically no matter what you do. Because I, that, that okay. box of Pandora has already been opened. Please believe me with my 35 plus years of experience with traffic enforcement and hounding my patrol officers to do traffic enforcement, simply reducing the speed limit from 35 to 25 is not going to give you what you want in the way, any way, shape, or form. I completely understand. That's because why it's a complex decision. It. I completely agree. It's a complex decision. You cannot only change to 25 miles per hour and everybody's going to be happy because we're going to have 50% reduction of traffic. Changing to 25 miles per hour zone will allow you to use more aggressive common procedures. When speed over 35 miles per hour, you cannot use some types of humps. You cannot do a lot of things only because emergency vehicles only also needs to be going on that road, snow plowing, water. I, I understand the whole concept. Stuff. That, yeah, well, so it's only complex matter because right now people who used to drive there, only one way how to make those people not to go on the Turk road to, to use that road as a shortcut is change speed limit, implement additional options and have more enforcement of speed limit. But if you're, only if, enforcement. Uh, what, you're saying, what you're asking is reduction, reduction of speed and the implementation of speed humps. You're on the right direction, but redu reduction of speed limit by itself will not work. It will. It's supposed to work as the complex. I, I, but I think that that's what we're moving towards. We, like, let's not. Uh, let's. I, I think we're going back and forth over what method is going to work, and finish. that's what the whole process I, I, is about. Without, without belaboring the point, I, do we have the board's approval to attempt to help the residents by? I'm sorry, I'm listening. Ed, my homey thing's gone away. Um, to help the, the, the residents by putting out this survey. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So that's, yeah. that's a we, deviation yes, from the process. We'll, we'll help them out. Mr. Tomko, can we get some type of letter sent out somehow, yeah. mailed it out, and we'll see what we get with just response from, from, we can't go out door to door. I think what you need to do is try to get out and at least meet with a group, a pocket of people, to tell them it's coming and to try to get them to help you with spreading the word. We'll send out the things and we'll see what happens. I, I do think Warrington has to be on that letter. Um, and I think Warrington has to give us Warrington, the I, I believe, will wholeheartedly, if we're going to do the work, will not well, you know. That's I, I, what they've indicated, that they're willing to let us take the lead, and they seem to be going along. And again, their criteria is the same as ours. But, uh, but I think if you're second. sending letters to yeah, and, Warrington uh, residents, Warrington Police Department should be part of the letter. Yeah, we will we'll reach out to Mr. Luber, the township manager, yeah. and their, their chief as well, and, and get their approval. When we say um, that we're working with Warrington and we're having communications with Warrington, I'm, I'm just trying to understand what the level of interaction is. Is it they've washed their hands of it? No. Have we talked with them? Or are they working they asked with us them? to take oh. the lead. Let me, let, we had, a, we had a, a meeting with the township manager, Warrington township manager, <laughs> um, and discussed the Mrs. Schroeder's uh, petition and that we were going to have a local traffic advisory committee meeting as it's required in the policy. We advertise it. They were invited to the meeting. Uh, Kristen Jones, the assistant township manager, was at the meeting and did verbally support that Warrington is in support of this process, but they're allowing us, our criteria to take precedence. A resident did email me it was a, uh, and, and Mr. Luber about two things. One was the, what petition were, what was Warrington supposed to use and about the speed board. Sergeant Jones, I think, was copied on the reply on the Warrington side, and Mr. Luber said, if Doylestown wants to put the speed board on, on our side, they have our approval. If not, we can most likely put it out. And so that, that was my 
correspondence with Sergeant Jones regarding this process. So there's been communication all along. Okay. And I think, um, so they're not washing their hands of it. They're letting us follow the so, process. So my, ne my next question is when we talk about follow the process, will Warrington follow our process? Like when we go yeah. through everything, yes. they will go yeah. with our recommendation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Can I ask one question in terms of the um, petition and getting the signatures? can they set up an online petition for people to sign? Because it is, I mean, people don't answer their doors. I'm just, I was just wondering, well, is there any rules letter. around we, that? We're not asking her to go door to door now. We're, we'll send out a letter. Here's, here's my concern. But the letter is, still says they have to sign the petition. How do we know that Mr. and Mrs. Jones, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, sign the petition and it's not somebody else. I'm, because part of this process is- Right, that's why I'm asking. It happens. So I, that's the reason why you go, unfortunately, that's the policy. I mean, again, Penna developed this, you go door knock, and I know it's encumbers, it's, it's difficult. If, if we're willing to accept electronic signatures and we want to amend our policy, um, that's fine. Um, but I don't know how you verify that that person signed the petition, because at the end of the day, and I told this at the local traffic advisory committee meeting, and you'd hear me for a few more minutes, is that when it comes to, it's fine when you all talk about traffic calming until we're all late for school, late for work, late picking up the kids, having to go to the doctor, and somebody wants to go, and everybody wants to talk about going from 611 to Bristol and Bristol to 611. Well, there's Warrington residents go from Warrington side down Alms House Road into the borough down Alms House Road, Lower State Road, or they go maybe uh, down another way. It, you got to look at traffic flow as a whole, not just one direction. So. That's the reason why they're included. So I was just so talking about the large. process. I I, I agree. Yeah. I, I all right. I think we've got. I think we have a, a plan in place. We're yeah, gonna but help I have out with letters. We're going to work with the Warrington Perfect. more specifically because there are Warrington residents that have to sign. And then let's let's keep it going. Okay. I have one small proposition. Why can't you revise your procedure for approval and put back this approval rate of thirty percent? Send letters to everybody. And that letter will say, if you do not agree with change of the speed, mail it back to us. Then count your, count your letters. Just make the change. Make the change for us, for people who live here. That's the board decision. To we're not going to change our policy tonight about Not tonight. Maybe in the future. We might take a look at it for the future. But for now, we have, you've, got yes. a, you've got a task, as unpleasant as it is. And then let's see how far you can get. You know, if you come back with 60% of your signatures, I'm okay with that. I completely, you know I, I appreciate that. If you don't that. get 70, you get 60, you know, I, I'm, I appreciate I'm okay Everybody, with that. everybody will appreciate it. What I would like to add to that study is also uh, traffic cut through research. Because okay. all that speeding caused by people cutting through that road. You know, people are That's, always going to cut through, no matter what. There is specific they're, they're rate, a, a specific rate, way to get to where they have but to there go. is a specific rate allowed for traffic common procedures to be implemented, forty percent. All right, we'll see what we'll Thank see what the plan we'll see what the uh, study reveals. Okay, so we can get to the study, get your signatures. But studies, okay. Before, we need to get signatures, then it's going to be study. Yes. Who is going to make that letter? We're going to send a letter out. Can we? Correct that letter before we send it out. Can you get our approval for that letter? How what about how about you send the letter to us? We'll review it and we'll send out what we think. We'll we'll amend your that's, letter. That's perfect. I appreciate it. Do you have business card with my letters? Send it to Mr. Tomko. Mrs. Miss Schroeder has my contact information. Has Sergeant Jones' contact information. So if you want to draft something? We'll put it together. That's perfect. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So they're going to send us a letter that they want us to send out, and we'll look at it then. Okay. Any other public comment? You know what to do. Peter Cox and I live in, in the township. My comment is very simple. I would like to ask, as you go forward with the open burn policy that you're that you talked about tonight, that I I honestly have not had a chance to read, did not know about it. I would simply ask based on personal experience with the Department of Defense and the military worldwide, be very, very strict and very careful with what they can burn in public. The Department of Defense right now is dealing with hundreds of billions of dollars of medical care and lawsuits from service members around the world that were involved in areas where there was an open burn 
policy and the smoke and the chemicals that were in the smoke invaded their lungs, invaded their bodies, and in lots of cases has killed them. Not, not to worry, Mr. Cox, the burning policy is like no burning allowed, except unless you have a little thing for your hot dogs. Okay, and like I said, I hadn't read it, so if it says no burnings allowed, because I've seen it going on in my neighborhood, big piles of garbage and trash and firewood yeah, and the smoke coming out of it's brutal. We've always had a no that, burning policy. You should call our code department if you see that. Say again? If you see something like that, you should definitely call either the police on the weekend or our code department, because they, our fire marshal would go out to a site like that and okay. check what it is. I was un totally unaware of that. Yep. Thank you very and much. Also, as Mr. Garten said, the board authorized the advertisement of an ordinance. That document will be put into an ordinance and advertised and be back <coughs> on this agenda in the future. Excellent. Well, you got my total support if it says don't do any open burning. Thank you. Thank you. One, one question, I apologize. Is that considered fire pits as well? When you have fire pit on your property, you have no, fire wood? No, no, fire pits are allowed. So just no trash? Y yeah. No, well, no yard waste? No leaves, no trash. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, like, waste material. No. We, don't, we don't allow the open burning of the um, yard waste and everything like that, or bur leaves, but a because we're in a containment area. Dogs. Marshmallows. Totally okay. Street. Totally fine. Any other comments? And cars. All right. Hearing none, we're adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.